Well, we're back around uh, 11.30 in the air, in the morning, and what I was waiting for came in. We do have a package opening. I know what it is. I have a feeling I know what it is. So let's get to opening it. Get our uh, scissors out. I know we have cut past the tape. There we go. One end is open. Sounds a lot like Christmas with package openings. So let's see here. Ink wrapped again, different type of plastic, a cellophane type of plastic. Okay. That's taken care of. When I get out, I'm going to have to take care of it. What I like about the soundbar, it's got a remote, which is nice. Take the remote out. So I was always having to get up and uh, uh, turn the bar on because it, every, every, every so often it go off if you're away for doing something. Then you have to go over and, you know, turn it on again. I know, being lazy, but anyways, here are the cables for it. And here is a sound bar. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go set this up now and do a bit of a sound test, test with this. Well, the sound bar is in, and the only way I can test it is by putting on a channel that is mine, because uh, any other material that uh, is not mine will be flagged for copyright, even if it's just in the background or using it as an example, and so you can't do anything other than, the, than your own. So here we go. Here's a sound test. You assess the journey. Because the, the journey... My voice. Lucid, my own vlog. And the journey isn't only in when you're awake. Your journey is when you're asleep as well. Uh, the different experiences you have in the dreams... Much the better sound. Experiences, so very good sound quality. Are, in many ways, they're akin to traveling, but they're also a... They're, and what I do in, is I never place the are, sound bar uh, directly... How you, know how you approach different problems and situations. I never put the sound bar directly on on whatever surface I'm going to put it on. I always get a piece of hardwood, the length of the sound bar, and put it underneath it, because hardwood makes a difference in the sound, it gives you a, a deeper sound, uh, and so it does actually work. It gives you a better uh, projection in terms of what you would ordinarily have if you simply had uh, the sound bar directly on whatever surface you're on. You always need to put any speaker, like like a sound bar or anything like that, you need to put a piece of wood underneath it, the wood, particularly hardwood, uh, will make a difference in the quality of the sound. Of the sound.
Well, apparently I didn't tap the screen enough to start the vlog, so... <laughs> We're starting. It is five hours and 59 minutes into the uh, 29th day of January. That's Friday. And as I said, as I said in the part that wasn't recorded, because I didn't press the record button, uh, we are in the uh, sort of... Most people wake up, and that's the beginning of their day. When I wake up, it's not the beginning of my day. And this is why there's no ending or beginning to the vlog. Uh, that has been done away with. I've done away with, away with the, sort of the standard opening and closing because my day isn't standard. When I'm waking up and I do get up and come here, it's because I'm shifting my environment. I was initially working on the experiences within the dreams. I wake up. When I do get up, in terms of actually getting up, it's been about a half hour, 45 minutes since I actually physically woke up, but I do have to sit down and go through uh, the various different e emotions, the sort of the experience that I had uh, while I was sleeping. I sort of just sort of take, take stock of things and see if, if I can sort of line things up and with a better understanding, particularly of that of the neut of neutral gin, if I can, can sort of continue the thoughts along the, those lines and make connections to things, then uh, then I can get up and oh, move on to the next chunk of the day, which is now I'm moving into my meditation period. And that will be a, a, a lengthened length uh, meditation today, because again, it, it is another feast day today. We have more than one Christmas in the Eastern, in Eastern tradition. Uh, and particularly on the Eastern Path, there's more than one Christmas in terms of a feast day or a holiday. There are numerous, and each are celebrated in many ways just as Christmas is. And so this is another one. And in that celebration, you increase your meditation. Because we understand that, that our sense of selves are all, is always growing. It's always sort of in a state where you have to always be cutting it back. You have to be trimming it. Uh, while status is important for most of the world in terms of seeing beyond and the sense of Dharma, you have to trim it every now and again. But there, there are some days, because the dreams don't finish properly, there are issues left uh, at a point where you're not comfortable with it. Rather than getting up, you go back to bed, you stay lying down, you stay in the, be in the bed, unless of course you have to go to the bathroom or something like that. But then you go back to bed and you continue along <coughs> the lines, trying to see if you can pull information, enough experiences together within the dreams uh, to make some degree of closure or finale. It's not, it's not clo see, they use the term closure, but again, it's not closure. It's a temporary closure. You bring it to a point where you're satisfied or sufficiently satisfied with where you are, particularly along the path. And that allows you to shift, to, to transition from one state to the next. When you saw me in the altered states, I'm not in the altered states as, mu as much anymore. And so my speech isn't slurred. I have a better presentation. Because I'm not in the altered states. Why? Because I finished, I got to a point where I can transition. I can transition from the sleep state to the wake state. I, from one set of experience to another set of experience. From one set of awareness to another set of awareness. That's the transition. If you can't transition, then you remain in the state that you are stuck in. And typically for me, I end up sticking into the uh, altered state. This is where my sticking point is. Unless I can bring myself in within the mind, within my emotions, to a point of transition, going from uh, uh, from the altered state to a, a state of reality, then I can't switch over. I stay stuck in that. And in many cases, what I do, will de that's where I will stay. I will stay all day in bed. And because there's not, a, I'm. The reason for the graininess here, looking at looking back at some of my videos and look at the at the at the, uh, 
at the quality of the video. It's not because the camera doesn't work, it's, 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 or the camera's faulty, or, or lower quality. It has to do with the fact that the whole room here is dark. And the only light that's behind me that's sort of lighting the situation is an LED monitor. So I don't have, I, I, I basically vlog within the environment. But the thing is, that could also, the darkness itself can also induce an altered state because you, you can slip back into things, into the state of, of, of altered awareness. I didn't want to say altered state, but it's, 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 it's not simply a state like that. It's a state of, of existence, a state of awareness that is not as you would have when you were awake. So there is a difference between the two. There's an awareness when you're sleeping, for me, an awareness when I'm awake. And as the two start to merge, I begin to understand that there are transition points. And that I don't get up, and now I'm not getting up, until I can bring myself to a point of transition. That's, of course, I have to get up. Uh, then that's a different situation. And then there's a point of transition. Unless I can get to that point of transition, then the transition doesn't occur. My mind stays within the altered state, and it will stay like that for the rest of the day. Until I am able to resolve... And so, see, some of the, it, it, I view this... <clears throat> I'm tripping over my words and sort of trying to think of how to phrase these things. It just came to my mind. Uh... People know puzzles, and they also know scavenger hunts. Imagine a puzzle. And I, was, I watched it on Family Five vlogs. When they put together their puzzle, and when I watch people when they put the, 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 together, they get so involved in the puzzle that they have to finish the puzzle or finish the section that they're working on before they can go on and do anything else. And as an, as an obsession of finding the pieces and putting it together. Once you're at a good pace, I'm not stopping until I get to the point where I can't continue anymore. That's the transition point. From one state of awareness to the other. In my situation, and this is what it is for do exploration research, and this is part of, part of physics. If you're doing physics within the laboratory, it's a static environment. You set the environment up, you control the environment, and that's it. If you're doing exploration research, that's quantum physics and beyond, because there is a beyond quantum physics, if you're doing exploration. The pieces of, of the puzzle are never presented to you. You have to go and find the pieces of the puzzle. Once you get enough pieces of the puzzle, you start putting things together, if you can. When you're at a good pace of putting things, the information together, or collecting the information, those are your, that's your deep dive. That's where you're deeply involved in the research. And because no sees the nature of beyond, the nature of beyond, the nature of beyond, because physics means nature, is metaphysics. And it wasn't just my own sense of understanding that there is metaphysics connected to physics. If you go do the history of quantum, quantum mechanics, You'll find that Planck kind of really turned things around. He's he's a point in physics that many physicists, many scientists wish never occurred, because it ended an era of science. Up until the point of Planck, science had got to the point where they thought they knew everything, that you could determine the way things would be, that you could fix things according to your own mind, that the mind was mind over matter. The mind was superior to everything else. That you, you could control things. You can control the environment because that's the way you dictate it to be within your mind. But Planck did something that, that wasn't supposed to be done. He began to experiment outside the bounds of actual the actual scientific method. He went outside that. He got rid of the purpose. He got rid of the conclusion. And what he started doing is simply using method and observation to drive himself forward. And in doing so, he 
he discovered new things. Matter of fact, he discovered the work that Einstein would base his work off of. So Planck becomes the core or the beginning seed of quantum mechanics and quantum physics. And in his work, Planck began to realize that there's room for the soul, that, that there are things within quantum mechanics, there's a quantum strangeness that sort of brought the soul back into things. And where they said before, oh no, God doesn't exist, you know, it was an atheistic because everything was determined. An atheistic world exists within it called deterministic physics. When you go, that's, that's the world of Maxwell. When you go into the world of Schrodinger's cat, where all conditions are possible until you have enough information to say one way or the other in terms of probability, you never get to the actual point of, of, of going one way or the other. So it, it always remains within belief. This is Schrodinger's cat. You open the door once again for the soul because you no longer have a deterministic university. A, a, a deterministic universe, you have a probabilistic universe. And a probabil in a probabilistic universe, you can't say there is no God. You can say, well, maybe there's no God, probably there's no God, but exists. That question, that question on the existence of God is e equivalent to uh, Schrodinger's can't. You don't know this. You can't determine this. It's beyond your capacity to determine it. And that's, quantum mechanics moved on. You ended up having uh, the development of astronomy in, in, in astronomy as they began with the computers trying to develop the understanding of the universe. They came up with an equation of the universe. Equation of the universe. They ran that. And what did they find? They find that the, in order to get the, these models to work, they had to add a, add a hidden mass and, of course, a hidden energy of 95%. So, in other words, only 5% of the universe is knowable. In other words, the universe that we know, that, that we see in, in terms of the, the telescopes and stuff like that, uh, is only 5% of the universe. That's your maximum knowable. The rest of it is dark energy and dark matter. That's what we talk about, dark energy, dark matter. This is what, it, And it's 95% of the universe. That means if we knew where we were in the universe and we were able to measure the universe from start to end, and let's let you know we don't know where we are in the universe. We have no idea where it begins. We have no idea where it ends. We simply see from our perspective. This is the whole concept of relativity. We only see from our perspective. We are only the observer. We are not in control of things. And this is what collapses deterministic physics. We don't know these things. Our maximum noble knowledge is 5%. That's our maximum. And again, you're in a situation of calculus where calculus is not a mathematics of proof. It's a, math, ma it's a mathematics of approximation. It is how close can you get to an asymptote or an infinite point without actually getting there and saying, okay, I'm close enough. We're here. And in some cases it works, but in other cases there is that st there still is that infinite di dist distance. So calculus is not the mathematics of, of, of determination. So what happens? What happens in between the, the creation of calculus and uh, 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 the beginning of uh, quantum mechanics and with Planck is a complete is a complete illusion because it's. And ironically enough, the Stephen Hawking and, and, and a number of the other scientists uh, of his modern, of the uh, latest era have determined because they, they, they were atheists that the God, that the universe is probably a, 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 a hologram that doesn't really exist. It's an illusion. This is the conclusion that came, that came to was come to by the postmodernists. I mean, a lot of the socialism you're seeing today. There are two classes. There's Marxist. The Marxists are determinists. They they say. Everything is knowable by law. And then there's the postmodern say, no, everything's an illusion. Your anarchists, Antifa, are these people of 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 chaos. They believe in a chaotic universe. And so this is their dictate, this is the, this is their ethos, this is their makeup, is is a nature of chaos that they are there to destroy society. The flip side to the uh, to the to the anarchists are the nihilists 
who believe in a utopian society and that there are no particular rules because everything is simply a concept. And this kind of plays itself out with Timothy Leary and, and Ram Das. And Ram Das takes the utopian side of things where uh, Timothy Leary remains something known as a realist, a materialist, and says only the material exists, but still couldn't explain the experiences he was having on on LSD when he was doing these sort of these acid trips. Uh, and he, but he found the he said all, all that stuff that was going on was within his mind, and so they call it a higher consciousness. And he even called it a higher consciousness, but didn't really make the connection that was beyond his physical existence. He felt that this was all within the physical existence. But again, physics comes in and wrecks everything. Because physics, you know, these are nice ideas, these are nice experiences, but physics comes in and says, well, okay, first there's the possibility of the soul because you have Schrodinger's cat, you have the work done by Planck. Einstein continues along, you end up with atomic physics as part of uh, the quantum mechanics, you have the atomic bomb, uh, which is, brings quantum physics into reality and intersects with our reality. And then you go from there to uh, particle physics. Particle physics began developing its theories off of quantum mechanics. It was it, it, it is based simply on the particle rather than simply looking at the atomic structure itself. Uh, and what was ended up find what they ended up sort of working out in terms of their understanding was that there were parallel universes. In other words, instead of having the one universe here, there are parallel universes. And so now you're talking about not just one universe, but multiple universes. Where other different f forms of physics can exist. The physics we understand exists within this universe. In another, multi in another universe, it could be completely different. We don't know this. Because we're back in the situation again of Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's cat. This paves the way, and this is where I began to realize that there's a problem here. We need to go back. I need to go back into history and see what was there. And I began to realize that there was a, there was the next link in the chain was metaphysics to bring the understanding of the beyond, the gnosis, back into physics and to connect the link between quantum mechanics, particle physics, and metaphysics. And that's the path I'm on now. And I began to, and I realized that there's so much there then it's beyond my simple understanding that this is, I am never going to reach the end. I understand now that this is, an, there is infinite knowledge. I am on a path of infinite knowledge. And my position is going to be a tween forever. I will never get out of middle, middle school. Because as soon as my, my, my knowledge gets to a point where I'm starting to feel comfortable with, I take the next step forward. And I'm, a, I'm in, in completely, then I'm back again, uh, eight years old, grade three, uh, going into brand new territory. And that's the way, that's, that's my existence. This is what today is, and once again, we're going 18 hours to discuss it, because it is lengthy. And we've just scratched the surface. Just gone through an introduction. Meditations will become a part of this, but we'll go in further into depth into the very particulars of meditation and the number of forms of meditation. This is more than just one.